Kia ora, year 12 and 13. This is question one from the 2013 level three differentiation paper. As usual, if you try each question before I do it, you'll get much more out of it. Um, please let me know if there are any mistakes or you can't hear the audio or anything like that. Right, first question, differentiate y equals tan of x squared plus one. So this is a pretty straightforward chain rule problem. The derivative of the outside function, tan, is sec squared of x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. Right, so my answer is written nicely, 2x sec squared or times sec squared of x squared plus 1. All right, fine to write it like that. So that is a little u question. Right, on to 1b. Okay, uh, find the gradient of the tangent to the function f of x is equal to the natural log of 3x minus e to the power of x. So again, it's a chain rule problem, but we're finding the gradient. And we've got to be careful to check if it's the tangent or the normal. It's the tangent, and we're going to evaluate that at the point where x equals 0. So we start by finding the first derivative. Right, so the deriv derivative of the natural log is 1 over. So it's going to be 1 over 3x minus e to the x times the derivative of the inner function, which is 3 minus e to the x. Okay, so writing that nicely, I get 3 minus e to the x over 3x minus e to the x. Now we want to evaluate that when x equals 0. So we're going to sub in there, just change pen colour. Right, so we get 3 minus e to the 0 over 0 minus e to the 0, which is 3 minus 1 over negative 1, so that equals negative 2. Right, also an achieved question. Right, the next couple of questions are merit ones, so they just have a few more steps of reasoning in them. Alright, find the x values of any points of inflection on the graph of the function y equals e to the 6 minus x squared. Okay, so the first thing you should do when you're doing this is to state, state what you're doing here. So we need to say something like this, points of inflection occur where the second derivative is equal to 0. So that's what we're setting out to find. So we'll start with, of course, the first derivative. So dy by dx, it's a chain rule problem. So it's e to the power of 6 minus x squared times the derivative of the inner function, which is just times negative 2x. Right, always worth popping in some brackets. OK, so we get negative 2x e to the 6 minus x squared. I'm going to pop a new slide in here. What we're going to do now is differentiate that. So just while the new slide's coming up, have a go at that. Um, notice that now we're on to a product rule because I've got negative 2x times e to the power of blah blah. Right, so d squared y by dx squared well, I'm going to write down the first function, so it's going to be negative 2x times e to the 6 minus x squared times negative 2x. Right? That's the derivative of the second function, plus negative 2, derivative of the first function, times e to the 6 minus x squared. Right, so if you need to go over that, we've got uv dash is equal to uv dash plus vu dash. Okay, now we need to clean that up a bit. So all of that equals 4x squared e to the 6 minus x squared minus 2 e to the 6 minus x squared. Remember our goal is to solve that equation equaling 0. We're looking for places where the second derivative is 0 to find a point of inflection. So we can factorise and we can take out 2e to the 6 minus x squared times 2x squared 
minus 1 equals 0. Right, let's take a look at this. Well, that's always positive. That's always strictly positive, never hits 0. So we're really just down to solving 2x squared minus 1 equals 0. Okay, new slide again. So 2x squared minus 1 equals 0. 2x squared is equal to 1. x squared is equal to 1 half, going very slowly. x is equal to the positive or negative root of 1 half, which is equal to 1 over root 2 or negative 1 over root 2. Now I just want to check the wording of this question quickly because I would typically want to find the y value that goes with that. But I just can't remember, because it was two slides back, whether we were specifically asked just for the x-coordinate. OK, so I'm having a look, and we were asked to just find the x-values of any point of inflection, which feels a little bit strange. Remember, if you're asked for a point of inflection, once you've got the x-coordinate out, you must go back and find the y-value. But in this case, that's all we were asked to do. OK, um, prize today, chocolate fish for the first person to email me and tell me what this song from a New Zealand 80s band is. You get a chocolate fish. Right, hopefully that should be pretty easy if your parents have brought you up on good 80s music. Now we've got two questions left. The next one is an example of parametric differentiation. So here it is. Um, so remember parametric differentiation um, is where we are given an x coordinate in terms of a t or sometimes a theta and we're given a y coordinate that also depends on a t, or sometimes a theta. And we're going to see these a lot when we get on to conics. But for now, the main thing we've got to remember is that when we do parametric differentiation, we're still looking for how y changes as x changes. So what we're really doing here is our old friend, the chain rule, but it has a particularly nice pattern. So we can say, as x changes, how does t change? And we can think about, as t changes, how does y change? All right, so we can write that as this. And the more common format that I will be using in class tomorrow when we do it is to write it like this, y dash over x dash. So as long as you remember how to do parametric, finding the first de derivative is, is really straightforward. So this is a really nice, easy merit question once you've remembered basic parametric technique. Right, so dx by dt is just equal to 5 cos of t. And dy by dt is equal to 3 sec squared t. So dy by dx is equal to y dash over x dash, which is 3 sec squared t over 5 cos t, which, as you all know from trig, is equal to 3 over 5 cos cubed of t. So that's the first part done. Right, we've got the derivative and now we need to find the gradient of the normal at a point. Now the point is found by substituting in t. So on the next slide, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the gradient of the tangent, then from that get the gradient of the normal. So dy by dx is equal to 3 over 5 cos cubed of t. So that's the gradient of the tangent. Right? At t equals, what are we looking for? t equals pi on 3 dy by dx equals, well let's go back to our wee special triangles, there's pi on 3, 1, root 3, and 2. So we should know that one anyway. So cos of pi on 3, of course, is equal to 1 half. Right? So dy by dx is going to be 3 
over 5 times 1 half cubed, which is 3 over 5 eighths. Yuck, that looks terrible. So that's equal to 24 fifths. So that's the gradient of the tangent. Be really careful when you're reading the question. We don't want that. We want the gradient of the normal. So that's coming up now. So the gradient of the normal is the negative reciprocal because we want perpendicular gradients, right? Um, so negative 5 over 24. All right, so that's that one done. It's okay to give that as a decimal, but I don't know why you would because you can get that as an exact fraction. Okay, last question. Right, this one is an optimization problem. It's a closed cylindrical tank and it's got to have a surface area of 20 meters squared. And our task is to find the radius that the tank needs to have so that the volume it can hold is as large as possible. Right, so at this point the first thing I'm going to be doing is drawing a really bad picture of a cylinder. There we go. So we're looking for R. What is that radius when the surface area is 20 meters squared? And we want to maximize the volume. So we can go to our formula sheet and we can look at the area formulae on the last page. And so we've got the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared h. So that's what we want to maximize. Right? And now we need to figure out what is the surface area. Well the surface area of the cylinder is going to have two parts. It's going to have the surface area of the top and bottom. Right, now each of those will be pi r squared for the area of a circle and there are two of them so it's going to be 2 pi r squared and then we're given in the formula sheet the formula for the curved surface area so that was very kind of NZQA thank you right back to the blue pen here we go so we've got the top and the bottom surface area and then the curved surface area which will be 2 pi R H. All right, and we know that that is equal to 20. So we can write down 20 is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Right, so these are the two most important, important bits of information. I want to maximize the volume subject to this constraint. Okay, so pause the video here and have a go from here because a lot of the hard work here is just in setting that up. Right, so remember I want to maximize v equals pi r squared h. Now, for me to maximize something I need to differentiate and I can differentiate only when I've got one variable. In here I've got an r and I've got an h. So I have to find a way to get rid of that h. And we do that using our constraint. So 20 equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, right, so let's isolate the h, make h the subject of that formula, 20 minus 2 pi r squared equals 2 pi r h, that's step 1, then I get 20 minus 2 pi r squared over 2 pi r equals h, right, I'm doing this in lots of steps, some of you will be quite comfortable skipping some of them, so there we've got 10 for the first term, so 10 over pi r minus, well the next bit, the two pi's simplify out, minus r. So there's my nice little expression for h. I'm now going to take it and shove it in to my volume formula. So that's on the next slide. So v is equal to pi r squared h, which is pi r squared times 10 over pi r minus r. Right, expand that out and we'll get 10 R minus pi R cubed, right? R squared and R. So now I differentiate. Um, I'd better say what I'm doing. So for a max, we need to find dv by dr equals 0, and we want 
the dash dash at that point to be negative. Okay, so we're going to differentiate this expression. Oh, we've done that. So we're going to solve this for zero. dv by dr equals 10 minus 3 pi r squared equals zero. So we'll get 3 pi r squared equals 10 r squared equals 10 over 3 pi. r equals plus or minus 10 over 3 pi which equals plus or minus 1.03 metres. And we're going to ignore r equals negative 1.03 metres. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. So you can just put something like that. It doesn't make sense. We don't want to have a negative radius. So we have found the value of r that is going to maximise the volume of that cylinder if the surface area is 20 square metres. Right, so just make sure when you do these questions, always make sure that you've answered it in context and given metres. So I would probably, if I've done all that work, I would probably write, just write a note that says something like this. Radius should be 1.03 metres to maximise volume. Okay, now we should also check second derivative. So the second derivative here is going to be equal to negative 6 pi r, which is less than 0, for r equals 1.03. Therefore, we have found a maximum. All right, so that's the first question done. Hope that helped, but please do let me know if you find any mistakes or anything that's not clear. Thanks for watching.